Okay, just one final bite check. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Biology and make selection. Lots of people say that the first impression is what matters. Um, that when I meet someone, I look at what they're wearing, I see all the visual stuff. But what happens subconsciously in your mind is actually really interesting. Hi, I'm Elaine Meyer. I'm from Floyd County. I have been in for, for eight years now, and this is my fifth year doing an educational presentation. I'd like to start out with having you pick a few different, or take a little poll. Okay, um, looks a little bit blurry up there. Um, but, but which one do you think is more attractive? Raise your hand if it's the right person. Who thinks that it's the left person? Raise your hand down. Okay, so the left person is the majority. Okay, what about this one? Right person? Left person. Okay, that one's about 50-50 for you guys. And this final one. Right person? And left person. Okay. Now remember which one you picked, because at the end I'll have to explain this a little bit more. Today I will tell you about the symmetry of the body and what that shows, the waist to hip ratio, people's natural smell, components of a lasting relationship, but mostly what happens subconsciously when you meet a potential mate. First I'll start off with symmetry. Symmetry is the perfect division of cells. If symmetry was perfect, the left and right would be just identical, which is what you can see in this picture up here. Genetics and the, and the environment change this in a human being. Good symmetry in a person shows the ability to survive development, health, and a good fertile mate. Men and women rated symmetrical people more attractive than those that weren't symmetrical. They also thought they looked healthier, and the difference was only by a few percent, but it was still a difference. Waist to hip ratio. The perfect ideal body formation would be a narrower waist than hips, which is what you can see in this diagram right here. This is a 0.7 waist to hip ratio, and this is a 0.9. So it's measuring from your waist right here, which is A, and then your hips, which is B. Only, the only actual people that fall into this category for women are people like Miss America contestants and all those people that you see on TV that are super thin. A um, majority of us would fall into a much higher range, which is actually really natural. Um, men's ratio is a little bit bigger. Um, it's 0.8 to 1 instead of 0.7 to 0.9. And then also, more important than the waist hip ratio in men is the broad shoulders. Caring for offspring. Fat deposited by your sex hormone, so this is estrogen in women and so on. Um, if you have the proper amount of estrogen flowing through your body, your fat would naturally fall into the right places and you would be at that 0.7 hip waist to hip ratio, which is kind of interesting thought. Um, women with the proper amount of estrogen would then fall into that vein, and the same with men for their vein. And then it also shows that those people also have left it less difficulty conceiving. Okay, this is a little Barbie ratio. Um, this is a Barbie um, with a even smaller waist to hip ratio. And then this is a natural or live human being, I guess, um, with a larger ratio. Um, so this is the girl Libby um, with her height and then the Barbie's proportions on her hips. And you can see it's really distorted figure. And then this is the Barbie's height, Barbie's height with her waist to hip ratio and her white hips. So you can see that even the Barbie is really distorted in all the aspects. Okay, I'll talk about faces a little bit. Starting with women, of course, um, symmetrical. Um, the perfect ide ideal face would be splitting your face right in half and then seeing the exact same thing on both the left and right side. Most people this does not happen for. Um, lots of people have one ear that's a little bit higher than the other. Not a no noticeable difference. I even, like, if you study really close, you can see something just a little tiny bit higher. Um, also in women, uh, their lower face and chin is wanted to be smaller and shorter. So you have that asymmetrical look, as you can see right here. 
Um, also, prominent eyes, their eyes really want to stand out. And then it's the estrogen that's also making all of this happen in the fat going into the correct places. Okay, now on the males, um, prominent lower jaw is more important. Um, also, you want that symmetry between the left and right side. Um, but more important than the prominent eyes is the brow, making sure there's a strong line. And then it's the testosterone that's moving the fat into the right places. Smell. This is a very interesting thing that I found while researching this topic. Um, that subconsciously, you uh, just focus on smell. You don't notice that you're actually doing it, of course. But even like this person's natural smell, you smell like people their smell more than others. Um, a study was shown um, at Cornell University, I believe it was, and it, it was a, it was called a sweaty t-shirt er, study, and it took 100 males and were, like, had them wear a clean t-shirt, and then they went and had them do exercises and worked out in the gym for a while, and then they brought them back in and everyone took off that t-shirt and then they laid, it, laid them all out and they knew who was with what t-shirt, and then they had over a hundred women come by and smell all the shirts and then like smell them and it's just a really interesting study to go into and look to. And actually through that study they learned that um, the people with the most symmetry like had the better smell or the most um, people that liked that t-shirt or something like that. Um, a lot of people can't smell anything when they talk about a person's natural scent uh, but, but they're still attracted to it. And then another subconscious thing that you do is you prefer um, a mate that is genetically similar to you. <laughs> Lastly, relationships. Of course, a uh, factual relationship is based on way more than at just sight and smell. Um, uh, old, but they have found that old couples tend to look more alike. Um, and this is based on their heritable traits. And then also having similar genetics plays up to 34% of the role in finding a friend fit or being someone fit, and that's done by the University of Ontario. Okay. The main theory, mostly, is that some genes work well with each other. Subconsciously, when you find a mate that has genetics very similar to yours, you want those genes to be passed down to your children. You don't have no idea that you're thinking this, right? Like all those traits that your body loves about itself, when they find another person with those exact traits, they want that trait to stay with you and your offspring. So you subconsciously don't want to break up the genes. So uh, of course it helps to have a very similar man. Um, more likely to have a happy marriage. It is found that um, Couples that are genetically similar to each other has a lower child abuse rate, and then uh, subconsciously um, they're more willing to sacrifice themselves for a person that is genetically similar to them. Um, and the likeliness of personality is also similar, it's not just the same in genetics, but also same in personality. And then another fun study was done on um, women majority of like men who laugh, or make them laugh, and then the men like the women who laugh at their jokes. True love. Um, people looking for a long-term relationship, a study was done, um, and it, it was, this is what they ranked in order for the, um, for what they were looking for in a long-term relationship. One is, number one was fidelity, then physical appearance, family commitment, wealth, and then status. So, based on what you just learned, can you figure out why you preferred that person on the attractiveness scale? I know that when I was looking for this, I noticed that I thought the person on this side was more attractive, and then when I went back and looked for it, um, he was much more symmetrical than the other person. He had a much wider and larger jaw at the bottom, and his eyebrows were much more prominent. So how do you think of the same thing on the next slide? On this one, um, there's, there's the same girl. Um, she was purposely photoshopped a little bit on that side and made one of the eyebrows a little bit higher, so he's very off symmetrical, and one of her eyes got enlarged a little bit more. And this is the last one. This one I found to be the most challenging, 
um, and these two pictures are very, very similar. But I had the I chose this person over here, and um, just the ga the gauze are a little bit bigger. One's a little more square, and the other one's a little bit more pointy. Um, also, the brows on one of them is a little bit larger than the other. Um, but on this one, a lot of the sym symmetry is very good on both both of them. So today, oh, and this is my work cited. Um, today I have told you about the symmetry of the body and what that shows. Talked to you about the waist to hip ratio. Told you a little bit about a person's natural smell, the components of a lasting relationship, but mostly what happens subconsciously when you see a potential mate. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Um, the question was, have, after studying this and making this presentation, have I been consciously thinking what my subconscious is thinking? Um, I would say that at, right after I did it, I started noticing those little things, but it's um, way too much work to actually look at all of that and <laughs> comprehend all of it when you meet someone. Any other questions? The question was, what got me interested in this topic? Um, this past fall, I took a class at high, in my high school. Um, it was called Introduction to Biotechnology. And we talked um, a wide range of tons of these different topics relating to biology. And we, he briefly mentioned this, my professor. So um, I wanted to, I don't know, any high schooler I think would be really interested in this. Um, and so I wanted to learn a lot more about it. Do you think, uh, is anything in science or human relationships in your future? Um, the question was, is anything about science or human relation, human relations in my future? Um, I'm not for sure yet. Um, I do find it very interesting and I do want to learn a lot more about it, but not for sure where the future leads me. Any other questions? Thank you for listening. <laughs>